Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War on the Sea, a new game out by Killerfish Games, the developers of Cold Waters and Atlantic Fleet. This is episode number 30 of our Let's Play series, playing as the Allies uh, in this Guadalcanal campaign. And the war isn't going great. The Japanese look like they're on pace to take Port Moresby. They've landed and likely will take the Santa Cruz Islands. We've evacuated our own troops from Guadalcanal, and we're in the midst of a long, drawn-out battle that will almost certainly take a couple of weeks at Milne Bay. And so that's the situation that we find ourselves in at the beginning of this particular episode. This was a start of another live stream on my Twitch channel. If you're interested in catching these, we usually stream around 8 to 9 o'clock Central Standard Time is usually the start time three or four days a week uh, on my Twitch channel. Link in the description to follow. But yeah, that's where we're picking things up in this particular episode, and I think we'll get to see a nice little surface engagement uh, in this one. But without any other spoilers, let's go ahead and jump forward and uh, pick it right back up in the stream. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave your thoughts below, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Um, in the meantime, I do want to call out some stuff that's changed since last time. So if I click on a base, uh, that's a bad example. If I click on this C3 cargo ship, you'll notice a few things. First, some of these buttons over here on this on this uh, ship selection or on this fleet selection have changed to be like dashes to the right rather than check marks. If you look at the drop downs here, manage cargo, launch aircraft, shore bombardment, un unload all cargo ships, replenish ships. These the, the text here has been modified to be something that I think is a little bit clearer to the player. You know, swap positions rather than swap, split group rather than split, merge groups. You know, you add the word groups in here a lot. So I think there's definitely been some sort of quality of life enhancements to some of these menus to make them a little bit more straightforward. One other thing also is that when you click on a unit and tell it to move, you know, in the past, every button you clicked would just add a new waypoint. Like you would just kind of, it would be like, oh crap, how do I, and you have to go back up here to hit the course button to get, you know, basically to start over. Well now, according to what I've just been told, if you right click, it ends your selection right there. So it doesn't get rid of the whole waypoint, but it just ends your selection, you know, so that instead of worrying about where I'm dragging my mouse around, you just right click and then it's back to, you know, the last click that you made. And so I actually think that's a really, uh, that's a good thing that they're doing from a quality of life perspective because a lot of times I had missed clicks because it was like, I don't know, just intuitively to me, if you right, if you, if it's left click to select, right click would be to select off and now it is. So that is absolutely brilliant. Um, glad that they, they updated that to the UI. So hopefully some of these, these types of changes should make, make playing the game a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more user friendly. Uh, and then we can, we can kind of experience what, uh, what we're going to experience there. Meanwhile, in terms of the gameplay, uh, we are, um, as I said, sort of we've evacuated our troops from Guadalcanal. I'm moving the Thresher, a U.S. submarine, up toward the slot to try and intercept Japanese troop convoys that might come down to Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal has been bombarded multiple times and was a level 5 airfield, but now it's down to a level 3 airfield, so we're trying to keep it suppressed. I've got another cruiser task force here of two heavy cruisers on the way north. Uh, it's probably a little bit too early in the day to actually send them up there. They're probably going to get bombed. But I am flying some fighters up here to give them some some protection. Um, and uh, and given that the level 3 airfield seems to only give the Japanese four dive bombers, I'm going to risk it and send them up there a little bit ahead of day, or of, of nighttime. They'll, they'll pull out in the night. Meanwhile, we have 15 command points because we have destroyed a couple of Japanese ships. We fought a surface battle off Guadalcanal, somewhat of a frustrating surface battle. I think in retrospect, it's fair to point out that I think I was making some of the mistakes that were causing my ships to go in circles. So the follow formation uh, is is still a little bit borked in the way that uh, if you go from like a, a, a two-line uh, formation where there's like three columns and two lines and you try to go into a single line, it takes forever and the ships don't really maneuver intelligently. However, that being said, I think I could have done a better job by just letting the lead ship go straight rather than waiting for everybody to get formed up and uh, and just kind of closed up that way by maybe slowing down the slowing down the lead ship a little bit. So that one was probably at least partially on me. So just calling that out. Meanwhile, we did just recently get some resupply. So there's 2,000 new troops at New Hebrides. We also got another 100 engineers and fuel. I threw the fuel on a cargo ship, which is on its way to Rennell Island. 100 more fuel will get us to the ability to upgrade the port to level three once we get 300 engineers. We do still have to wait two more weeks to get, uh, to get oh, we're out of supplies. Well, that's different. 
In any event, we need to get some supplies to Rennell Island. Apparently, we ran out of supply. I'm not sure why. Um, I've never noticed bases using supply when they're not in light land combat, unless that's something else that's recently been been tweaked or fixed or what have you. But uh, looks like we need to send some uh, supplies up to Rennell Island. Um, and uh, again, we're working on getting the port upgraded to a level 3, so then I can just set up a shuttle service to keep Guadalcanal sort of beat down uh, and hopefully destroy its entire air force and facilities because if Guadalcanal loses its air force Florida Islands has no air force Melidia has no air force and then there will be no enemy air bases you know south of Shortlands so they'll be really pushed back and we'll be able to operate our surface ships around Guadalcanal much more freely although we're several weeks away from being able to launch any kind of offensive there given just the sheer amount of troops that we, we, we need to overcome the Japanese troops there. So in any event, maybe we can start picking off like transport convoys and other things like that. I'm also bringing about, I think, what is it? How many troops? Let's take a look. Manage cargo. We've got 527 troops here, 1,200. So we've got another 1,700 troops on the way to Milne Bay from these troops, from these uh, cargo ships. I really should have just used like cruisers and stuff to transport those guys out. It would have been far safer and saved on some air attacks. But in any event, meanwhile, I'm also going to go ahead and set up another task force here. Again, we've got 15 points. So I think we're going to set up a, a fast transport task force here with two Farragut class destroyers. We'll use the Farragut itself, and then we'll also go ahead with the Mc, McDonough. So we'll do that. Um, we'll go ahead and set these guys up, and then we're going to go ahead and load cargo. So we're going to give each of these ships 250 troops so we can bring troops a little bit more quickly over to Milne Bay because these guys are going to move at 30 knots as opposed to, you know, 12. So we'll get these guys going this way to get some additional reinforcements out that way. And uh, that's the situation now. So it is September 11th of 1942, and uh, let's, let's just go ahead and um, fast forward here. Enemy ships spotted near Kingfisher. Go to. All right, so we spotted... and Oh, boy. Two heavy cruisers, two destroyers, six merchantmen. What do we have in Task Force 7? Two heavy cruisers, one light cruiser, two destroyers. So that's a, that's a much closer fight than I would like. Uh, this guy's got 53 nautical miles left, so let's go ahead and have him shadow... This is going to be a much closer fight than I would prefer. Let's go ahead and line ahead. Uh, we'll put the destroyer Bach in the lead. The Benham second. The Vincennes and Quincy, the heavy cruisers, in third and fourth. And then we'll get the Atlanta in the rear, the rapid firing Atlanta. Yeah. It is going to be evening, so it won't be night. So that should benefit us just by using our radar. I'm wondering if the Atlanta should go in third and then use her rapid-firing guns and be in a better position range-wise. But I'd rather the enemy focus their fire on other ships. I don't want them to focus on Atlanta. I'm not as worried about losing some of these destroyers, but I don't want to lose an Atlanta class. We only have a couple of those. So I think this is the... The direction we need to go go ahead and set up for an intercept in about two hours so it is probably going to be early evening so we'll ignore that we're going to go on a slightly slower time compression as we start moving the ships north i did just set up another another kingfisher so these guys are almost out of fuel but another kingfisher should be able to come north and uh, maintain contact Oh my god, there's a million enemy float planes here. Are there other convoys or something? Alright, let's clean some of these guys out. Alright. Where did they go? They lost sight of them? Gotta be, like, where are all these goddamn float planes coming from? 
And how did we lose sight of this enemy convoy? It was just here. Um, Task Force 7. Well, I really hope this isn't an enemy submarine attack and that we've actually collided with the enemy task force. Because if it's a sub, we're going to take torpedoes. <laughs> Alright, let's go to... Also, what do we... Do we get ships? Alright. Before I forget, this guy's already heading out. I think he's too far away to be able to load. Yeah, he's... Alright, so these guys are on their way. I don't think they have seaplane tenders. I've never seen this many float planes in the game. But I guess we're going to go ahead and begin our fight. It's going to be 1,730 hours. Let's just pray that this is an en 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 isn't an enemy submarine. Let's turn radar and sonar on. I don't think sonar is going to do anything at our current speeds. What's the sea state? No layer. Uh, Visibility is 80%. Sea state's 2. So that seems like it's pretty good Pretty good weather conditions. Let's go ahead and... where Everybody's in good shape, so let's make battle speed. I'd say 30 knots is probably battle speed. Everyone else will speed up to that. We'll have to just keep our eyes peeled in the event that there's... Nope. Ships. Okay. So, by the way, do, do, do spotting planes help you at all? All right, so let's take a look here. This is an enemy task force that is in line formation. They have two destroyers in front. I think these dual turreted destroyers are some of their more modern ones. But they've got two destroyers in the lead. Behind that they have, I think this is a tone, but let's take a look at our um, recognition manual. C. No, it's not a tone, actually. What is it? A Tago? What? Why did it block that? Maybe it thought you were going to, like, dock someone? That was weird. All right, um... Where is that? I don't even see that, that ship class. It's not the tone, I know that. You're right. Um, it's not the Mogami. The Takao? And I know I'm butchering that pronunciation. Yeah, it looks like it's probably her. Now, the Takao itself is sunk. So I guess it'll be the... Oh, okay. That's one of the, the Takaos. That's what you're saying. Okay, so let's go back here. First off, let's actually just target this lead enemy heavy cruiser. As a Takao. This one's another one. So we'll probably the Maya. Oops. Uh, I'm very confused. All right, that was weird. It was like I still had Takao selected, but it was showing me a Fletcher. All right, so we're we're identifying the lead to cruising. Or wait, no, this is not the the mast is the other way. So this is not a Takao. It's maybe a Miyoko. Let's take a look here. Four, two forward, one aft, other direction mast. Yep. So it's got to be the Haguro, because she's the only one of these that hasn't been sunk. Um, we'll go ahead and identify the destroyers now as well. This is an older destroyer class by the look of it. It's a two stack with unshielded gun mounts. Surprisingly, one of your better pronunciations. All right. Let's see here. Kind of 
kamikaze. You've got one gun pointed forward. You've got a two a dual mount torpedo tube after that. An unshielded bridge. Two unshielded gun mounts up top pointing in opposite directions. Although this doesn't quite look like that. This doesn't look like there's one after the... F Wait. Funnel. Gun mount. But there's no gun mount here by the looks of it. This does not look like a gun mount. To me, anyway. This right here. Unless you guys have some, some different thoughts on what that could be. But that looks like this should be a gun here. And this looks like it's something else. Minikaze, you're saying? Yep. Definitely a Minikaze. You've got the one gun pointed forward. You've got the... The same sort of bridge funnel configuration on the second funnel. You've got opposite guns pointing each direction. Then you've got one pointing back this way. So Minikaze for sure. Have we sunk any of these yet? We have not. Interesting. Oh, no. I clicked the wrong... <laughs> Oops. All right. We'll go back and fix that cruiser. We changed the cruiser's designation. And then this is a destroyer with a... By the way, does anybody else think this? these turrets look really weird? Like, these guns are tiny compared to these gigantic looking turrets. Um, all right. Gonna guess this is one of their more modern destroyers. So it's probably the Akuzi uh, or Aku Akuziki. These are the oldest? Yeah, the turrets look straight out of Star Wars. Either way, I'm pretty sure we got this one right. Akizuki? Akizuki? Alright. Alright, so let's go ahead and reclassify this cruiser. What was she again? The Miyoko? Yeah. Alright, and then... Let's go back to these merchant ships, and they only have one cargo ship, which makes classification easier. We just got to look for Maru, because all their cargo ships are Marus. Oh, God damn it! Nah. All right, whatever, I'll just do this. How far can I click out? By the way, this battle might be pretty damn important because if they get through, their cargo ships get through to Milne Bay, that completely flips everything on its head and I won't have enough troops to to hold. If they bring an extra 6,000 troops into Milne Bay, I'll be able to hold out for a long time, but there's no way I'm going to be able to turn them back. So if that's where these troops are going, we need to stop them. We have to stop them. All right. Um... All right, so they're in a line formation. We are also in a line formation. What's the range out here? 38,000 yards still? Jesus. All right. Well, I guess we'll just uh, unpause then. Oh, did I do that again? God damn it. Why? Where is she? Where is she? There we go. Still a little bit finicky. But better with the most recent update. There we go. All right. Need the Iowa to hit at that range? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. All right, so let's... We've got our Kingfishers, by the way. The enemy has their own patrol planes, which I'm a little bit nervous about. Is that going to massively increase their accuracy? I don't know how naval gunfire is treated in the game in terms of, um, you know, how it uh, decides accuracy levels. I mean, at this range, there's no way you're hitting. I don't even think you have got the range to hit at this range. 1908-2001, thank you very much for the follow. But let's, I guess we'll just set the formation to attack the lead destroyer at this range. 
before we, we get in a little bit closer. I don't know if I really want to... Oh, nice. So it shows you the, the ammo that's being fired here. Okay. Um, so would the cruisers be firing HE? I guess if... Is, the, is it all based on the lead ship still? Would have been nice to have shot down the enemy float planes. Uh, Eugene85, thank you for the follow. All right, so our guns are swiveling, but I can't imagine they're going to be hitting at, at 33,000 yards. So we're just going to continue on this angle. Hopefully we can get a line of battle formation directly ahead of the enemy. By the way, I do love, and I know you get it when they're shooting at air targets, but I do love that, like, maximum elevation. Looks like a 45-degree angle there for those five inches here on the Fletcher. Now, the one, the, I guess the good thing for the U.S. destroyers, and the Atlanta for that matter, they're going to be better gun platforms than I think the Japanese destroyers are. And with radar, I'm hoping that we've got a much better accuracy setup than the Japanese do. Although, if we do get into sort of torpedo range, I'm a little bit uneasy about that. Meanwhile, we're making 30 knots um, in just absolute picturesque formation here as we go in to uh, get ready for battle here. So, I'm assuming these guys don't attack unless I tell them to. So I've got to give them all individual targets then. That's fine. All right. The enemy is veering off a little bit. So the, the lead destroyers will target the enemy lead destroyer. I do think my heavies should focus on their heavies. Oh, shit. We're shooting? Can we hit at this range at 35,000 yards? I can't imagine we can hit at this range. Love the Atlanta target the enemy's lead destroyer. You can see the shell splashes. Can they even get that far? Their max elevation as well. They're only making 13 knots? Oh, that's because they're tied to those heavy uh, transports back there, huh? Well, their 8 inches are opening up. Oh, we're shooting at the enemy. Maybe we're shooting at the enemy aircraft. That's what we're shooting at. Gotta get that spotter. Don't let them spot for the formation. Hey, Kingfisher, maybe you should stay a little bit... a little bit away. Does anybody know if the game actually has scout planes, like, helping with spotting? I'm gonna pull them back a little bit. I think they, maybe the only reason I can spot the enemy at this range is the float planes. But you can see here the, the guns have sw since moved back to level. Looks like the cruisers are firing for effect, though, at 32,000 yards. Sorry, do the guns even bend that far up? These are... Are these Pensacola classes? I can't even remember. Boom! Talk about plunging fire, huh? Uh, we have fought heavy cruisers once with a battleship. Oh, they're New Orleans classes? Okay. Good call out. Oh, look at this, those shells splashing in there close to that one of the lead ship there. Alright, I'll order these destroyers. I think they might be getting close to getting in range at 29,000 yards. The enemy splashes aren't too far off.
The enemy formation is seen from above. I am gonna have try and cut their or cross their T here and turn make a right turn here once we're probably around I don't know what the right range is, but maybe twenty thousand yards. Maybe fifteen thousand. Do I have to tell my cruisers to turn the radar on? I think the radars are all on. No, they're on. You can see them on down here. Yes, you do have to tell them to turn their radars on in individual fights. They start off. Whoa, those shells were too damn close for comfort. Will I get notifications on hits on the enemy ship? No. Not really. You can observe, but no notifications anyway. Where the hell did they go? I don't even see the enemy ships anymore. Oh, they're there. Just a pretty little sunset flight, guys. Let's see, they're making some, some subtle course changes. Probably to get their rear turrets in action here. No sign of any damage. Although, maybe they're damaged? Well, no, that's just that rear turret can't, can't pivot to shoot, I don't think. You know, if I was in their command, I would tell the transport ships to scatter. Those shots were way off. I think the five inchers actually have a max range of seventeen thousand yards, so that would explain why they're not firing. How much? I don't. I don't want to burn through all my ammo on my heavy cruisers. How much? Uh, how much ammo do these guys have? I would think five hundred rounds is plenty. Maybe we should hold off. I mean, we do have a fifty-two percent solution. That's not bad. So they are making a course change. Looks like we're still shooting well short, although that one was pretty close. What did I just do? All right, let's bring the formation right a little bit. The enemy's still coming right at us. They're starting to turn right as well. I'm trying. I would like to head head them off to keep to kind of cross their T. So I'm going to let them come forward, and we'll turn right a little bit. Now that I have the lead ship under my command, all the rest of these ships will turn in sequence. Rudder right midships. Honestly, I'm wondering if maybe I should cease their fire. Start with 330 per gun, so that's 660. Have they really fired 160 rounds so far? I can't imagine that's the case, but let's let's hold the fire for now. We'll hold fire till we're at a 70% solution. I want to be accurate as hell with these guys. Yeah, I'm not too worried about a long lance quite yet, but if we get suckered in too close, that'll definitely be an issue. So you can see the formation is starting to turn in sequence. Um, you're saying spotting shots? Is that an option? This? Spot? So you're saying we should do this? Alright, we'll do spotting shots then.
so that gives you better accuracy. We might have gotten a hit there. Or maybe it was just a flash of an enemy gun. Oh no, we just took a hit. Minor damage on the 8-inch gun turret. There's a fire. Well, I don't want to slow the formation yet. fire spreading to the magazine? That's brilliant. The fire will spread when you're running fast, but I, I don't think it's justifiable to to slow the formation down. I suppose we could slow it a little bit, but we still need to make battle speed, so we're just going to have to deal with it. All right, let's, let's come over a little bit more formation. We're closing inside 20,000 yards. I want to, one, adjust course to maybe throw their fire off a little bit. But two, I also want to see if we can't get our rear turrets in action. Fire in the magazine's no problem. Don't worry, they can flood it if they need to, right? It'll be out in 69 seconds. We're all good. Alright, rear turrets are in action now. And it has now spread to the bridge. Gotta love how those fires spread when you're moving quick. Three hexes. All currently, all of our damage control is currently in use. This fire on the 8-inch gun is about to be put out. The magazine fires 30 seconds away from being put out. Yeah, I know, Lake, but I'm not going to slow the whole formation down. What's the solution up to now? 84%? Do you think turning off spot is, is a good idea now at this point? All right. Let loose, boys. All right. How's the fire looking now? 8 inch, uh, the secondary turret, this turret might be out of action? I'm not 100% sure, because it looked to be like it was still firing. Oof, one real close, landed real close, close. So they are both firing still, so I'm not sure what the, what's being repaired on the 8 inch gun. The fires are, are two of them are out. The Brit... Oh, we took another fucking hit. This one on the propeller, so we're going to probably lose some speed here. Another fire. Are these guys in range to open up yet? 20,000 yards. I don't think so. We don't even see any indication of hits, although maybe because we're firing... We are firing... Are we firing AG or AP? I'm firing AP, which is the right thing to do against... These kind of targets. 90% solution, and we're not hitting anything? Let's take a look. We're bracketing them. Pretty good. Destroyers are still just out of range. We're going to alter course just slightly. What do you mean hit the fire button to have them shoot full? Uh, they are firing. Oh, they're not firing at, at a faster rate because they didn't hit fire again? Well, I've, I've clicked it multiple times. I guess we can hold. Then once they're loaded up, hit fire again. Broadside, fire! You can't even see, really. You can see a little bit of smoke from 
our ships that are damaged from their point of view. We're not doing much damage. Their destroyers have started firing. I'm not sure that my destroyers can hit at this range. 18,000 yards. Both of our cruisers are firing. The Atlanta's not yet. But she's not in range. So, so far all we've gotten in action is our two heavy cruisers. We are in a line... We are... We are kind of crossing their T here. Now, they might have the rear turrets in action. Looks like they probably do. God, you guys, you've got radar. Shoot better. You've also got spotters up here. Taking flak fire, too. That one looked like maybe a hit, but it was hard to tell because the enemy's firing at the same time the, s the shells are splashing down. I can't really tell if any of these are hitting or if they're all just near misses. Alright, so our destroyers, I think, might be firing now? No, not quite. 17, I think again, 17 or 18,000 yards is the range. Damage control still just minor. All the fires are out, by the way. Shellfire still splashing around the enemy, but no clear hits. Destroyer should be just about in range. Let's narrow the range a little bit. I'm going to turn in a little bit. All right. Actually, destroyers are in extreme range. Firing at the Akuzi. Atlanta's now engaging. So the entire battle line is in range now at this point. So let's get some cinematics. I love watching, by the way, the um, the guns sort of adjust. I'm assuming it's supposed to be like the, the stabilizers or something adjusting for the... Uh, throw some torpedoes down that formation. Can torpedoes hit at 20,000 yards? We're still at 18,000 yards here. What's the range on these guys? <laughs> Yuck, US torps. They'll move toward me? Maybe. I don't know. I gonna hold off a little bit on the torpedoes. I'd like to be inside 10,000 yards. We're not closing range fast enough, I don't think, for them to hit. Well, I only have one load of torpedoes, Newhauser. There's no reloads, so you get one shot. You know, you'd think for a 90% solution, you'd be doing better than this. We're all going to burn through all our ammo before we even start hitting. Um, I wonder if we slow down if it'll make us more accurate. We're at 30 knots. We're at a 76% solution, though.
Hey, we got a hit on that turret there. I got a, I got, I got a good hit, as far as I could see anyway, on that enemy turret. Overshoot there. Not a lot of maneuver, boys. This is just sort of line up and fire. You can see when the Atlanta fires, though. Just... Boof. Rounds, rounds everywhere. Where are my kingfishers? I don't know that you actually do anything, but why don't you guys get back there. How many rounds do the destroyers have? I'm assuming they've got a buttload of ammo. Almost a thousand rounds. Oh, it's just so... It's so sexy to just see the battle line all... Fling out flame. Alright. Any more damage here? Minor none. None. I'd like to imagine this is the exact perfect... Sen oh, big explosion. Big explosion on the rear of that enemy cruiser. Fire started. Meanwhile, this lead enemy destroyer looks like she might be in some trouble as well. She's ablaze. But I really feel like this is the scenario where radar is, like, is, is the godsend, right? Relatively clear weather. Actually, almost perfectly clear visibility. Almost a perfect sea state. You know, daylight, I mean, it's not it's not sunny, per se, but it's not nighttime yet. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for them to launch torpedoes in this formation. They'd have to veer out of formation to do it. They have to, they have to swing their broadside on to get a torpedo out. Maybe no. Even here, this this can't be brought to bear. They don't. They'd really need to kind of go hard over and fire down the line. All right, two enemy ships. Both those destroyers are ablaze. Or the destroyer and the heavy cruiser, anyway. Looks like they're losing speed, by the way, so that explosion must have impacted their ability to, to make way, so they're only making nine knots. So the entire f formation has lost about four knots of speed. The rear cargo ship, one of these rear cargo ships, almost looks like it's broken formation. They're like, screw you guys, we're, we're going our own way. They're still only bringing to bear their Ford turrets. I think an intelligent AI at this point would veer off and uh, and use its entire broadside because we have a pretty big rate of fire advantage with our entire line firing and only their front two turrets on both these ships being able to be brought to bear. Grim, a 30-knot task force trying to hit him at 40,000 yards with a torpedo I think is probably asking a bit much. We are bracketing this lead destroyer. You lost a Yamato to a surprise ambush of three South Dakotas? Ouch. Yeah, this is a... What the AI should do is completely cut itself loose from its cargo ships and, and start maneuvering aggressively for torpedo strikes, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. Anyway, the, the machine gun Atlantis should help. Our lead destroyer is not taking any fire. It doesn't seem like they're even shooting at her. We've got three fires set on the horizon now. Looks like... I don't, I'm not even ordering fire on the second cruiser in line, but I think we must have hit it with an overshoot or something. Because she's burning now also. The report tells you how much damage you've done. 
Um, what report? Oh, yeah, I don't want to do that yet. Um, yeah, I mean, in theory, you're right. We present a, a larger cross-section for them to hit, but naval, there's a reason Naval Doctrine always sided on the side of, hey, we should try and cross the T to get as many guns in action. Broadside's a smaller cross like Well, it, I guess it depends if you're hitting deep versus wide, right, Newhauser? You've got a longer target to hit in terms of depth straight on. Smaller cross section, you're right. Oh, no, you're saying. Oh, whatever. Alright, so. This enemy destroyer, I'm I might be hitting it. I mean, I don't think she's sinking yet. She's in a rough a rough spot, but they've increased speed back to 13 knots. So it does look like uh, they may have repaired some of their engine damage. Just look at all those five-inch shell splashes. We're at 16,000 yards. Not sure I have a ton to, ton to add here at the moment. Commentary-wise, it's just sort of watching these guys get pulverized. There's no time compression when you're shooting, so... You just kind of have to wait. All right, let's... Let's turn the formation a little bit. These lead guns look like they're kind of getting... They're trained, they need to adjust their, uh, I don't know what you call it, but this, the superstructure might start getting in the way before too long. Also, turning probably will throw their fire control off a little bit. Panopera, thank you very much for the follow. So that was a pretty sharp turn, actually. But, whatevs. How much ammo do we have left? 700 rounds on the 5 inchers. What about our cruisers? How are they doing? 150 in the rear. 120. We are almost out of armor-piercing ammo on these, these lead ships here. Should we do a narrow? I would imagine doing narrow at this point might be a better rather than a wide dispersion. We've got about 25, 24 more broadsides. Go narrow. Whoops. Go narrow spot all right narrow spot you know what's annoying is I don't want to do that for the destroyers I would prefer the destroyers keep firing rapidly But when I when I change one of them, it changes all of them. Not for the target, but just for sort of the firing orders. Which is kind of like, you know, hell, let the Atlanta just bla blaze away. I already hit Fire Lake. I hit Hold, then I hit Fire, so we should be good. All right, their lead destroyer still burning, by the way. But she's got two Ford turrets in action. They're heavy. It looks like it's changing course a little bit. Maybe to bring in torpedoes or maybe to bring in its rear turrets. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of War on the Sea. We're about halfway into this particular battle, and I think this is a good stopping point. I don't want to do like an hour and a half long video, so we'll have to pick this thing up next time. But it does look like we've effectively crossed the Japanese formation's T. We've started some of the lead ships of theirs on fire, uh, and so far things are going reasonably well in terms of the, of the damage that we've taken. With that being said, that's where we're going to leave things off. Let me know your thoughts below if you guys enjoyed the episode. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, 
I'm out. <laughs>